Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about completeness property that is the infimum property. Okay, now what is the statement of this property? It is saying that let S be a non-empty subset of real numbers which is bounded below then S has an infimum. That means the infimum is going to exist if that set is non-empty and it is bounded below. Okay, now remember one thing when I'm going to prove this statement, I am going to consider that the supremum property holds. Okay, that means I'm going to take that as an axiom. Okay, so that means what I'm going to consider even before starting this theorem is that if some set S, let's say that is a non-empty set. Okay, non-empty subset of real numbers and if it is bounded above, okay, plus bounded above that means this will imply that supremum of the set let's call that SUP of S will always exist okay so this thing I'm going to consider as an axiom okay so in order to prove this I need to have this thing in my hand and vice versa that means if someone tells me to prove this one then I need to have this statement as an axiom both of them cannot be proved independently okay so now i'm going to prove this statement considering that i have this kind of statement in my hand as an axiom from beforehand okay so now it's given to me that s is a non-empty subset of real numbers and it is bounded below so like always let's take a pictorial view so let's say s is some subset of r okay this is my real line from infinity to minus infinity and this is bounded below okay i don't know whether it's bounded above or not just for the sake of drawing let me consider it's bounded above it may not be bounded above okay so it is mandatorily bounded below let's say the lower bound or i can say the lower bound maybe it's somewhere over here it may not be over here let's say the lower bound is l naught okay so i'm considering l uh, L0 is a lower bound of the set S. Okay, so obviously L0 is somewhere much before the S, S set has already started. It's much before that. Okay. So now I can say that let L0 be a lower bound of S. Now I am constructing one set such that each element of that set is going to be a lower bound of s that means here i've taken l0 is a lower bound of s now this may not be the only lower bound there will be other lower bounds let's say l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 and so on there may be infinite number of uh, lower bounds of s and it's not maybe obviously it's there okay because if there is a fixed lower bound over here of s set then all the elements lower than that the more I go lower, all of them will be lower bounds of my set S. So there are infinite possibilities of choosing this lower bound of S. So now I'm going to construct one set which is going to contain all these lower bounds. Okay. So the set may not end here or it may end here. That's according to my wish. Okay. Let's say this set is not ending. It is going all the way down to minus infinity. Okay. So this set I'm going to call as T. So T is the set of all the lower bounds of the set S. Okay, and L naught is one of those lower bounds. All right. So I'm going to uh, construct this set. So let T be the set X belongs to real numbers such that X is a lower bound of S. Okay. So I have taken all those real numbers which are all lower bounds of my set S. Okay. Now again, I'll tell you like before, whenever you construct a set, you need to show it is non-empty. So obviously you can see L0 is an element of T. So that means T set is non-empty. Okay. So I'm going to state that here. Since L0 belongs to T, this implies T is non-empty. Okay. So I have constructed one set T which is non-empty. Now let me take one random element from my capital S set. Okay, let's say I'm taking an element 
small s from my capital S set. Now, obviously, you can see it from the diagram that whenever I take any random element of the set S, it is greater than all the elements of T because obviously you can see that all the elements of T are on the left hand side and this element S is on the right hand side. So any element of the S set is obviously greater than all the elements of T. Okay. So let T belongs to capital T and S belongs to capital S. So what will be my relation between the small t and capital T? So I've taken one small t element, let's say this is a small t element from the capital T set and I've taken one small s element from the capital S set. So what will be the relation between these two? Obviously t will be less or equals to s for whatever t and small s I take from these two sets, right? Okay, so let me call this relation to be one. Now, you can see that this T set, it is bounded above by the element S from this relation. Any element of T I am going to take, it is going to have S as an upper bound. The element small s is an upper bound for the entire capital T set. Okay, so you can see that um, S belongs to S is an upper bound of capital T and I can see this from the relation 1 because every element of the capital T set is mandatorily less or equal to small s. So that means small s is becoming an upper bound of T. Now as I told you, I have this axiom in my hand that whenever I get a non-empty subset of R and if that is bounded above, then the supremum of that set will exist. Now look at that set T. T is a non-empty set, obviously a non-empty subset of real numbers. So T is a non-empty subset of real numbers and the set T is bounded above by small s, right? So T is non-empty, T is bounded above. As per the axiom, I can say that supremum of the set T is going to exist, right? So by supremum property, supremum of t exists okay and let's say let me call that supremum t to be the element capital L okay I am just naming the supremum to be capital L so now where will the capital L element be present in the figure L is the supremum of t that means among all the upper bounds all the elements of the capital S set all of them are upper bounds of the capital T set. Now what does supremum means? Supremum means it is the least among all the upper bounds. Okay. So among all these upper bounds, the least element is the element capital L. So that means the element L is somewhere over here. As per the figure, it's going to be somewhere over here. It is going to be the least among all the elements of S. Okay. So now just from the figure, you can see the one that I have drawn here, obviously you can see that all the elements of T are going to be less than capital L because the supremum of, if the supremum of the set is L, then all the elements of that set is going to be less or equals to L. That's the basic definition of supremum. So since supremum of the set is L, this implies T belongs to capital T or I can say this implies that T will be less or equals to capital L for all T belongs to capital T, right? So whenever I take any element from the capital T set, it's going to be less or equals to capital L because capital L is the supremum. Okay. So let me call this to be relation uh, equation number two or in equation number two. Okay. Achha. Now observe one more thing again. As I told you, capital L was the least of all the upper bounds. Okay. Now who were the upper bounds of T? The upper bounds of T were all the elements of S, right? All the elements of S were upper bounds of T. So among all these upper bounds, the least of them is capital L. That means among all the elements of S, 
capital L is the least element, right? So, so what I can say that since L is the least upper bound among all the upper bounds of capital T that is the elements of S set right so among all the elements of S the least one is capital L so I can represent this statement in form of this equation or in equation that small s as you can see all these are random elements of capital S so let's say one of that element be small s so small s as you can see is going to be always greater than capital L because capital L is the least of all those elements so small s is going to be greater than equals to capital L for all small s belongs to capital S so let me call this in equation number three okay now see I have almost reached my conclusion just observe these two inequations number two and number three see from number three what can I say from number three I can see that among all the elements of S the least one is capital L and from number two I can say that among all the elements of small among all the elements of capital T the greatest element is capital L right now what do I want to prove? I want to prove that infimum of my S set exists. Right? Remember what do I want to prove? I want to prove that infimum of S exists. This is my target. That means what do I want to prove? That uh, among all the lower bounds, the greatest one is going to exist. Right? So that means I want to show that greatest lower bound of S exists so among all the lower bounds the greatest one exists this is what i am trying to prove here right so as you can see among all the lower bounds which one is the greatest the greatest is going to be capital l because among all the lower bounds the supremum was capital l and capital l is again less than all the elements of s so that means as per equation number 3, I can say that L is a lower bound of S and as per equation number 2, I can say that L is the greatest of all the lower bounds. Right? From equation number 3, I am saying that L is a lower bound of S because this relation, what does this relation suggest? That whenever I take any element of S, it is greater than or equals to L. So that means L is simply a lower bound. So first of all, the lower bound of S is existing. And from equation number 2, I can see that all the elements of T are the lower bounds of S. And among those lower bounds, the greatest one is capital L. Right? So capital L is greatest of all the lower bounds. So if you combine these two things which are written here, okay, if you just combine them, the lower bound is existing and the greatest lower bound uh, among them is capital L. So what does this two statement imply? That infimum of S exists and it is none other than the element capital L itself. Right? So this was what we were trying to prove that if S is a non-empty set bounded below then its infimum is going to exist and we have proved that with the help of the axiom that if the set is bounded above and it is non-empty then its supremum will exist. So if I consider the supremum property as an axiom I can prove the, in the infimum property completely with the help of the previous one. Right? So that's it about this video. Thank you everyone.